What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anthony McLemore and in this video I'm going to talk about why I own a rental property, but I don't own the current house that I live in Now this side of investing in real estate investing Especially can have some people on the far left and have some people on the far right Some people think that renting is the best option because you have the most freedom And some people think that buying a home allows you to build the most wealth because you're going to be paying off your house Every single month now I am not on the far left or the far right side of this argument and I have very recently owned the house that I live in but I am currently in a situation where I am renting a house and I do have a rental property and I thought that I could use this video as a good explanation of why that is so if you think you find any kind of value in this video then hit that like button and if you want to go ahead and get a free stock just for signing up to an app go down to the description below where if you sign up to the public app you'll get a free stock just for signing up you don't have to get them any money you don't even have to connect a bank account if you sign up using that link you will get free money but to get to the first point and what really was the deciding factor for me and my family and what you should definitely think about when you think about renting a house or an apartment or buying a home would be the length of time that you plan on staying in that specific location and as far as length of time goes the math works out to that if you don't stay in a place for more than seven years at a time then it will be more cost effective to rent a house or rent an apartment rather than buying a house this goes through a lot of factors but one of the main factors is the down payment and the closing costs that you have to shell out to buy a house that you don't necessarily have to shell out when you rent an apartment or rent a house yes you may have to pay a security deposit but other than that there's no real upfront cost that goes into renting a house as far as the house that we live in goes it is a little bit more expensive on a month-to-month -month basis i live in alabama where the cost of living is very low so the house that we were coming from cost twelve hundred dollars a month in a mortgage and now the house that we're renting costs nineteen hundred dollars a month however we were planning on moving to a new city regardless and factoring in some of the other points that i'm going to talk into this this video it actually made a lot more sense to rent a house rather than commit to buying a house even if there was a long-term plan to turn our next home into a rental property and that's what i want to go through later in this video so to wrap that point up if you don't plan on staying somewhere for more than seven years or even more than five years then it would be more efficient for you to rent your house rather than going ahead to commit to buying your house and the next point that i want to go into why you should consider renting versus owning or a fact that made me consider renting versus owning was the current mortgage rates that are involved with you getting a bank loan for the property as you may know if you're watching this video shortly after it's uploaded we are currently looking at some of the highest mortgage rates in the last 15 to 20 years it may not be high to some people that lived in the 80s or the 90s but these are some of the highest mortgage rates that i have experienced in my adult life at about 7.5 almost 8 percent it does seem a little bit outrageous to go ahead and commit to a 30-year mortgage especially since when we bought our first home in 2021 we got a mortgage rate of just 2.75 percent now i understand inherently that that is going to be very very hard to come by in the future i understand that we may not ever see a mortgage rate below three percent again unless the economy is incredibly bullish as it had been for 10 to 15 years straight so honestly what i'm looking for now in terms of interest rates or in terms of buying a house would be something at least below five percent if we can't get below five percent mortgage rates in the next three to four years then obviously i would have to consider biting the bullet regardless but as of right now it just doesn't seem like a very realistic option for me to commit to a 30-year mortgage at the all-time highest interest rates now i understand that there are some pros to the interest rates being high meaning that if you are a cash buyer or if you have a lot of money on hand to go ahead and put 20 percent down you can take advantage of much less competition go ahead and commit to buying a house now and then refinance whenever the mortgage rates gets lower i have actually took that option into consideration and what i want to do instead of committing to buying a house and refinancing what i want to do instead is take this opportunity to buy a second rental property when there's less competition and hopefully get it for less money overall let's say a two hundred thousand dollar house now sells for 175 and then I'll pay the higher interest rates on the rental property for a few years and then go ahead and refinance once the rates go down. But I'm going to save talking about rental property opportunities until later in this video. But my next point that made me and my family consider renting a house rather than buying another house would be the new area that we were going to be living in. Now, this one is less financial advice and more of a personal preference. But if you are moving to a new part of a state, a part of the country that you've never necessarily immersed yourself in and you don't necessarily know what parts of that particular area that you like, best it may be best or it seemed to be best for me and my family to go ahead and rent for a year or two until you can really immerse yourself in your area and solidify where exactly you want to put roots down at now in the last house that we bought it wasn't the nicest area but it was a nice house and we quickly realized that it will be way more beneficial to be comfortable where you're living at even if you have to spend a little bit more money instead of just chasing the best deal now our previous house is a perfect area for a rental property is near a highway it has a lot of amenities near it but it wasn't the best 
place for walking, riding bikes, and overall doing things outside that you normally would do if you had a closed off nice community. So taking into account some time to look into your area, to research your area, and know where the places that you want to be are is one of the main beneficial factors to renting rather than owning. And as I said, this particular point is not investment advice at all. I think that it's a good, healthy habit for anyone, whether they want to build wealth or not, because it allows them some time to know their area rather than wasting money on a house that they don't feel fully comfortable at, that they would then have to move out shortly because of where it's located at. But let's get back into the investment advice and start talking about some of the financial reasons why I decided to rent rather than own. Now, this is going back to the beginning of this video when I started talking about the leftists who thought that renting forever was a good idea and the writers who thought that never renting was a good idea. I don't know if that's actually politically correct for the left and right community, but that's how I see it. And what I'm trying to get at here is discussing the difference between assets and liabilities. Now, I'm a big fan of both Dave Ramsey and Robert Kiyosaki. And funnily enough, they're both extremely wealthy real estate investors, but they have completely opposite approaches on how they go about investing in real estate. Dave Ramsey, for example, has 600 plus million dollars of fully paid off real estate. No payments on it at all. He buys it all in cash. He states that he buys all his rental properties in cash. And because of his bankruptcy scare when he was first getting started on his wealth building journey, this is one of the reasons why he thinks that cash is king. If you can't buy it in cash, then you can't afford it. And then Robert Kiyosaki on the other side of the coin has over $1 billion of debt attached to over $2 billion in real estate. And Robert Kiyosaki believes that debt is a good tool that you can use to leverage your wealth building journey in order to build wealth faster and more effectively than buying it in cash. And sometimes looking at both sides of the coin at the same time, it's kind of hard to agree with one person. Robert Kiyosaki states that assets are items that put money into your pocket on a month to month basis. And liabilities are things that take money away from your pocket on a month to month basis. So if you're looking at it through this lens, then that house that you live in that has a mortgage attached to it is a liability because the mortgage payment is taking money out of your pocket every month. Whereas if you had a rental property that had a mortgage attached to it that had a rent that was higher than the mortgage payment, then that technically would be an asset because you will be making a net profit on it each month. And one of Robert Kiyosaki's favorite lines is that your house is not an asset because it is not making you money. Now, I honestly say I don't fully agree with that sentiment because I think that your house can be an asset. It may not be making you money cash flow wise, but it definitely can be making you money in appreciation and tax write-offs and overall in loan pay down from you building equity in it over time. So the idea that your house is not an asset is not necessarily something that I agree with. But if we're talking strictly net worth terms, the moment that I decided to move out of the house that I had a mortgage attached to and make that into a rental property, technically I freed up over $200,000 worth of liability from my net worth and then turned that into an asset. Meaning that when I was living in that house and it wasn't bringing me money, I could not count the value of that house towards my net worth in Kiyosaki terms because the house itself was taking money away from me in a month to month basis and I was not necessarily building any wealth from it as an asset. But now that I don't live in it anymore and I have a tenant into it, now it is an asset so the total value of that house can now be counted towards my net worth. I know that was a little bit of a long winded explanation. However, that leads me into point five and the reason why I decided to rent rather than own a house is something that I talked about a little bit earlier in this video, which is that renting instead of buying right now allows me to hold on to some capital, hold on to some cash and wait for opportunities to get a second rental. I believe that because interest rates are so high right now that people are not buying houses as ferociously as they used to. So I'm looking for a good opportunity to buy a house below market value and turn it into a rental and in turn boost my net worth before the interest rates get too low again. And I start have to overbidding to buy a house. Now this plan does take a lot of patience and I'm not just going to jump on any opportunity that I see. But when I do find a good opportunity to buy a second rental, I do plan on documenting that journey on this channel. It's kind of similar to what I did when I turned my first house into a rental. So you guys can see exactly how that process works in this economy. But with all that being said, if you found any kind of value in this video, then tap that like button for your boy. And also if you want to learn how to make money online in the same way I do, I have created a thumbnail masterclass that you can sign up for, which is going to be a small part of a larger digital product that I plan on releasing in the next few months. So if you want to go ahead and go into the description and check that out as well. And if you sign up now and use the code early bird, you'll get 75% off. But I hope you did find value in this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn those post notifications on and I will see you in the next one guys.